that opens up a whole different door than what's my goal to make money, which some people feel is about potential. And potential is so much more than that. It includes that and goes way beyond it. So we're all helpers in this room. How can you help or motivate someone who, who isn't living up to their potential? How can you inspire them to become more than the sum of their parts? For me, I think we have to take a look at the, at the word potential itself and what that might mean, because I think it means something different for, for everybody. Um, it, I don't think it's just our talents or our skills that form our potential. I think in large part, it's the way we see ourselves, because how we see ourselves and what we can do in the future is really what dictates what we are going to ultimately do in the future. So for me, it's all about asking someone what it is they really want to do, what makes them happy. Again, going back to questions, just asking a lot of good questions. And what are they currently doing in life that actually aligns well with whatever it is they want to do and how happy are they? And from that point forward, I think it's it's all about taking what they want to do that they're not currently doing and setting some short term goals and and just getting started. You know, inertia has a way of expanding and we don't want um, when we're when we're feeling stuck and unmotivated that inertia can set in. But if we just get started even on something small, that really helps us get over that, you know, little hump of of not going where we want to go. And I think that really does help with the motivation. And some people may be hearing this question like, well, how can I get my son motivated or my spouse motivated? And really, it's really important to refrain from advice giving to people who don't necessarily want it, unless you're asked for it. So there's one thing to help somebody, and it's really an honoring thing to do, to not give advice. If you honor the wisdom of oneself, to heal him or herself. They will rise to the occasion if you give them that opportunity and you're not demanding or giving them suggestions. Then there's the, okay, what if I wanna get motivated? If you've acknowledged to yourself, okay, well, I need to do something and what's important to me, it's really about, okay, there's probably a fear in the way, fear of failure, fear of the unknown, and what do you do about that? It's, it's really about getting clear on what is it that you want for yourself and your life, right? What's most important? And then taking responsibility for having what you want in life. Yikes. Sometimes people don't know what they want in life. Very often that comes up in conversations I have with friends or with clients. And I find myself, if they are open to advice, like you said, asking, what do you really want to do? What makes your heart and soul sing? What's your calling? If money, if time, we're not an, we're not an issue. And if you had enough skills and talents in an area that you could at least get started, what could that be? That opens up a whole different door than what's my goal to make money, which some people feel is about potential. And potential is so much more than that. It includes that and goes way beyond it. You know, developing your full potential was the first talk I ever gave when I was 19 years old, 46 years ago. <laughs> I mean, it was, I was all enthusiastic. I was the youngest teacher of Transcendental Meditation, and actually I fainted in the talk. I was so nervous. They thought I was dead. <laughs> <laughs> but developing potential has been a big part of my life, and I've done it, and I continue to do it. And I know that it's a balance of light and darkness. The first stage for me was through meditation. There could be other tools and techniques. There's so many available today, but taking time to become quiet frees us from the overstimulation of the world. Meditation is what our prayer can be the same thing. Uh, taking that time inside, creating a priority to do that, to listen inside, to feel inside, and to uplift yourself. Positive affirmations and so forth can often give us a extra support. So that's the light side of it. Then the dark side of it is just as important. And many people, you know, their spirituality is just light centered, you know, always be positive, always be this and put on a smiling face. But authenticity is a balance of light and dark. We have the daytime, we have the nighttime. Everybody always has their down moments. And often we find our passion in life by going to those places that we ignore. And it's our, it's our painful emotions, things like anger or sadness or fear or shame or guilt and any of these kind of painful things that nobody wants to feel. If we're feeling them, you listen to them, that's it. You don't indulge in them, you don't live in them, but you take time to feel it. And journaling is one of the most powerful things we can do 
to go to the dark side, so to speak, of what, what are these feelings about? Because they're all messengers from the soul. Mm -hmm. They tell us our thinking is off here or there and explore those feelings and always behind an emotion, uh, particularly a, a, we might call negative emotion, I just call them painful emotions, is frustrated desire. So if you can feel the emotion fully, you can then ask, well, okay, what am I wanting? What am I wishing? And, you, and what am I needing? You go to the depth of your soul in those moments to really feel the juice to motivate you, to empower you, to come back on track and live the life you want to live or learn what the life is you want to live. People do end up getting a lot of pressure with themselves and they also fall in love with people, with people's potential. And I guess I would offer all of those people, finding someone who loves you for the person you are doesn't excuse you from reaching the potential you were born to achieve. Mm -hmm.